Guests, trustees, chancellor, acting president Barami, distinguished faculty, classified professionals, family and friends of the graduates, welcome. My name is Dr. Mildred Lewis and I'm privileged to serve as the interim College of Alameda Vice President of Student Services. And I'm, I am honored to welcome you to this momentous occasion to celebrate the achievements of the College of Alameda graduates along with you. Our guests who have supported our graduates in achieving their goals and their dreams. Welcome. Good afternoon, everyone. Glad to see you all on such an amazing day where so many accomplishments are manifest and made present. At this time, uh, I would like you to please join me in welcoming uh, Dr. Jeanette Jackson, Chancellor of the Peralta Community College District. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. And for those that are looking in the sun, I will make sure that I am short. Good afternoon. As was stated, my name is Dr. Jeanette Jackson. I am the interim chancellor for the Peralta Community College District, but most people call me Dr. J. And for those of you that are over the age of 50, you can look at me and know that I am no Dr. J. But I don't play a little basketball at one time, but I was never that, but thank you. So I'd like to share a little story with you today. Sometimes when things in your life seem almost too much to handle, when 24 hours in a day are not enough, and you, I want you to remember the mayonnaise jar and the coffee. So a professor stood before his philosophy class and had some items in front of him. When the class began, wordlessly, he picked up a very large and empty mayonnaise jar and proceeded to fill it with golf balls. He then asked the students in the class, was the jar full? And they agreed that it was. So the professor then picked up a bottle of pebbles 
and poured them into the jar. He shook the jar slightly, and guess what happened? The pebbles rolled into the open areas between the golf balls. He then asked the students again if the jar was full. They agreed it was. The professor next picked up a box of sand, and he poured it into the jar. Of course, the sand filled up everything else. He asked them once more if the jar was full, and they kind of laughed a little bit and said, yeah, 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 the jar is full. The professor then produced two cups of coffee from under the table and poured the entire contents into the jar, effectively filling the empty space between the sand. The students laughed. Now, said the professor, and the laughter subsided. I want you to recognize that the jar represents your life. The golf balls are the important things. Your faith, your family, your children, your health, your friends, and your possessions. Things that if everything else was, left, was lost and only they remained, your life would be full. The pebbles are the other things that matter. Things like your job, your house, your car. The sand is everything else. The small stuff. If you put the sand into the jar first, he said, there's no room for the pebbles or for the golf balls. The same goes for life. If you spend all your time and energy on the small stuff, you will never have room for the things that are most important to you. There was always be a time for you to clean the house, to fix the disposal, but take care of the golf balls first. The things that really matter. Set your priorities and the rest is just sand. The professor smiled and one of the students raised their hands up and said, but professor, what about the coffee? He said, I'm glad you asked. It just goes to show you that no matter how full your life is, there is always room for a cup of coffee between two friends. So congratulations, class of 2023. You have found the golf balls, the most important things. It is what has brought you here today. And the people behind you are the ones that helped to get you here. So on behalf of the administration of the Peralta Community College District, congratulations, class of 2023. give Chancellor Jackson another round of applause for those words of wisdom. Thank you, Dr. Jackson. At this time, would you please join me in welcoming Jennifer Fowler, incoming president of the Faculty Senate of College of Alameda. Good afternoon, graduates, faculty, administrators, classified professionals, trustees, and honored guests. I am humbled to be the faculty speaker at this year's graduation. On behalf of the faculty, I congratulate each and every one of you on this tremendous achievement. We are proud of what you have accomplished so far and everything you will accomplish in the future. Graduation is an opportunity to reflect on the power of your education. In life, it often feels like change is an unavoidable reality in a temporary world. Seasons change, relationships change, technologies change, opportunities change. But today, graduates, we celebrate something constant in your life, something everlasting something no one can ever take away from you, your education. Material objects and the world around us comes and goes, 
but no one, I repeat, no one can take your education away from you. Yeah. And that, graduates, is something to be celebrated today. Take the permanence of your education and harness it into good. Use each day and moment to build on what you've learned here at College of Alameda. Build relationships with people who face problems by being their solution. Graduates, your faculty bid you farewell and look forward to the future you create. Congrats, class of 2023, and thank you. Thank you for those words of wisdom, President Fowler. At this time, please join me in welcoming Louis Martinez McFarland, President of the Classified Senate of the College of Alameda. Welcome, proud parents, chosen family members, guardians, family members, and friends of our graduates. Thank you for being here. Welcome dedicated classified professionals, administrators, faculty, trustees, alumni, and distinguished recipients. And welcome and congratulate to the College of Alameda class of 2023. Graduation is an important and emotional period. On behalf of the Classified Senate, we wish you the very best in the next phase of your life journey. Many of the people that helped you in your journey are here today or in spirit, especially my classified colleagues. I would like you to know that the classified professionals are those that you have met, laughed with you, shared your hopes and dreams, and supported you during your orientation, financial aid reviews, your learning communities, Asesso, Puente, Emoja, EOPS, Salam, that, that you participated in. The Learning Resource Center is one of many of you guys are familiar with, and the tutoring center and the library staff, and et cetera, et cetera. We believe in your success and hope in your next journey, either at the four-year university or entering your chosen career, that you know our hearts and good wishes are with you from the College of Alameda. And again, on behalf of the Classified Senate, thank you for allowing us to participate at this important day. And we congratulate you on your success. Thank you. All right, at this time, it gives me great pleasure to welcome to the stage a young lady that is near and dear to my heart, one of my top scholars of all time, the president of the College of, Me of Alameda Associate Students, President Nate Myers. <laughs> welcome her, y'all. Good afternoon to everyone. Welcome family, friends, and supporters of the College of Alameda graduating class 2023. I would like to thank the students for the privilege of having served you as your ASCOA president, student body president. It has been rewarding and beautiful to represent the College of Alameda. I have had the honor of holding this position and learning how much, learning but so much from each and every one of you, whether it was at a meeting, in a conference, or at a Tasty Tuesday event. I, it has also allowed me to build great relationships and long life friendships. As we continue on to our next chapter in our lives, continue to strive for, your, for all of your goals, your goals, no matter what comes in your path. I will take this experience with experience being a college president for the first time and knowing and the knowledge of knowing that no matter how old or how young you are, you can achieve anything your hearts desire. 
I would like to thank the president, President Diana Barabi, for her time and support to the Associated Student Government, to Jay, Simeon, Barcarena, and Marcus, my fellow senators. Also, thank you for your commitment to ASCOA and to Natalie Rodriguez. Yes. To Natalie Rodriguez. Yes. I want to thank you for your encouragement and your loving support that you have given me. Thank you all. Congratulations, class of 2023. Thank you. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, President Nate Myers, one more time, round of applause. <laughs> the future is truly, truly bright. Now, at this time, please join me in welcoming our College of Alameda Acting President, Dr. Deanna Bayrami. Dear graduates of the College of Alameda class of 2023, honored guests, faculty, classified professional, my name is Diana Barami, and it is a great honor to stand before you as your college president on this special day. We are honored today to have among us the chancellor, Trustee Latino, Trustee Quindlin, Trustee Bill Withrow, and Trustee Cindy Napolia Bellaris and the board president were not able to join us today, but they sending to you their best wishes. Today, all of us are here to celebrate you and your accomplishments and the achievement of your personal hopes and academic dreams. Congratulations, class of 2023. We are so delighted to be celebrating with you today. Yeah. On behalf of our COA community, which we call the COA family, I want to acknowledge your hard work and dedication you have shown immense flexibility, resilience, and determination in overcoming extraordinary obstacles and achieving your goals, especially in light of unprecedented challenges related to the pandemic and post-pandemic shifts in teaching modalities and schedules. It has not been easy, and your performance under these tough circumstances is inspirational and impressive. I also want to recognize and celebrate all those very important people with you here today who have supported you along the way, including your parents, grandparents, families, loved ones, mentors, friends, and all of those who cheered you up, cheered you on, and helped you stay the course so that you could achieve your goal. Let's take a moment to recognize this great support. <laughs> Members of the College of Alameda class of 2023 are the first to participate in a full traditional commencement since 2019 before the pandemic rocked our world. During this academic year, 282 students will be receiving 274 associate degrees, 235 certificates, and many students will transfer to four-year universities, such as CSU East Bay, San Jose State, UC Berkeley, UC Santa Cruz, UC Davis, and all other great uh, UC system colleges. 
This graduating class includes students from diverse backgrounds, just like our community. Diverse cultures, every faith, and walks of life. 54% of the graduates are first generation students. And we and your families are so proud of you. Our youngest graduate is 16 years old. And our oldest graduate is 70, 70 years old. 83 or 29% of all graduates are from Alameda Unified School District. From, and 43 graduates, or 15%, are from Oakland Unified School Districts. Yeah. Despite the diversity, diversity and differences among us, each of you have shared the common goal to be here today. And yet, you have taken so many different paths to achieve this moment. Maybe your family has been here in California for generations. Or maybe, like me, you are a, mo you are a more recent arrival in California. Whatever your path was, I am so very glad that you are here with us today. You are graduating at a time of some uncertainty, but also of great possibility. The world has undergone a significant transformation, and we are all facing new challenges and opportunities. But I do believe that you, as our next generation of leaders, have the skills, knowledge, and character to create a better future for yourself and for all of us. As you move forward, I encourage you to continue learning and growing throughout your lives be open-minded, curious, and adventurous. I also want to remind you that your education does not end here. You are now part of a global community of learners and thinkers, and you have a responsibility to use your knowledge and skills to make a positive difference in the world. I hope that you'll stay connected to College of Alameda and to each other, and continue to seek out opportunities for lifelong learning and personal growth. Hopefully here at COA, family, or elsewhere where you can continue to flourish. In closing, I want to congratulate you once again on this remarkable achievement. As you move forward, remember that you are not alone and that you have the support and encouragement of your family, friends, and community. I wish you all the best in your future academic goals, and I look forward to seeing the great things you'll achieve. Thank you, and congratulations once again, class of 2023. <laughs> and now I have a distinct honor to introduce to you A special scholar, our valedictorian, Miss Verley Carmack Collins. <laughs> Miss Verley Carmack Collins is a passionate learner, intent on understanding the nuances of our society as they affect African Americans and other people of color. These nuances are experienced through systemic racism, a system created and maintained to incorporate racial inequality in early every facet of life for people of color. Do I have a slip? Yes. Oh, okay, sorry. I'm a native of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, excuse me, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and I have a degree and an RN from the Columbia Hospital School of Nursing in Pittsburgh a BA in History and Black Studies from the University of Pittsburgh, a BS in and an MA in Counseling Psychology from Holy Names University in Oakland. I 
an acupressure therapy from Acupressure Institute in Berkeley, and an AA degree in the Adam Apparel Design and Merchandising Program right here in Alameda. I served as a major in the Army Nurse Corps Reserves. I love to travel, <clears throat> and my personal journeys have taken me to five continents and many countries, such as Egypt to view, view ancient historical sites, to South Africa to see Mandela's homeland, to Morocco <clears throat> for nursing tours, and China and Beijing and China. I have traveled to Australia to see how native people live, and in Europe I have visited Paris, Italy, and Denmark. After 29 years <clears throat> in nursing, I retired from Alta Bates Hospital in Berkeley, in, uh, in Berkeley <clears throat> as a registered nurse in the operating room, um, doing various surgery, surgeries and medical procedures. I am an active member of the East Bay Center for Spiritual Living and the Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. Okay, I'm also a member of the African American Quilting Guild of Oakland, Yes, that's it. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Good afternoon, Chancellor Jackson, Board of Trustees, President Dr. Barami, administration, faculty, staff, honored guests, and most especially the class of 2023 graduates and their families. I would like to share three stories that I experienced as a child and as a teenager because I believe our childhood experiences impact our future. Okay, thank you. First one. It was summertime, I was five years old and along with several other children, we were eating grapes with seeds. I heard once someone say, don't swallow those seeds because they're not good for you and you could get sick. Well, after a couple bites of grapes, I ended up swallowing several seeds. I didn't intend to swallow any seeds, but it happened. I panicked. I was scared. What was going to happen to me? I felt guilty even though I had <clears throat> not tried to swallow any seeds. Now I was afraid to tell anybody what happened. I just kept wishing that everything was going to be okay because I thought that the seeds were going to start growing a grapevine from my stomach. The next morning when I woke up, I didn't feel anything growing in my stomach, but I was relieved and figured I'd be okay. From, from what I experienced, I started questioning, how does the body work? What happens to your body when you eat grapes? I didn't know the answer, but one day I was going to find out. When I was older and decided on what I wanted to study, I decided to be a registered nurse and study the human body and how it works. So that wasn't a surprise to me. What I realized was my curiosity and questioning about the body guided me there. In life, curiosity is like a flame that grows from questioning and finding out answers. The quality helps in discovering the whys we are questioning. Questioning and being curious can expand our awareness, and these are qualities that help us grow. My second story happened when I was a little girl. It was summertime in the mid-1950s. My father, his parents, and me were driving from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania to South Carolina where they were all born. I was born and raised in Pittsburgh. I was excited. I had never been down south. It was dawn when we crossed the South Carolina state line and we stopped for gas. I had to go to the bathroom. <laughs> when I stepped out of the car, I saw a bathroom sign that stated white. The bathroom, that bathroom was to my right and was close to the front of the gas station. To my left was a wooden fence with a narrow opening. The sign on the fence stated colored. The letters were in different color. And it was a little dark, and I thought that bathroom was probably pretty with all those different colors. There were some steps going up to the second floor, and I wasn't sure about going there because it was still dark. Instead, I went to the white bathroom because it was closer. When I went inside the bathroom, I was surprised because it wasn't white. It was blue and white. And I wondered, why did they say it was white? Because it's, you know, it's not that. 
Then about two minutes later, my grandmother came inside the bathroom and started rushing me to leave. And as he walked out the door, she said to my father and grandfather, he, meaning the gas attendant, probably saw the Pennsylvania license plate and knew we were not from South Carolina. She sounded very nervous and scared, and I didn't understand her fear. I found out many years later what made her fearful. She was afraid from the Jim Crow policy of racial segregation and dim, dim, uh, discrimination of black people. This meant separate bathrooms for colored and white. This practice of Jim Crow made me aware much later to understand why when I went to the corner store in St. Matthew, South Carolina, I had to wait until other people who walked in the store after me were waited on first. I was last. I was mad when that happened. I didn't know why I was being treated like that. I was angry and confused. And I learned later that anger, to take that anger and use it constructively to understand the history of racism in this country. <clears throat> the third story happened when I was in my high school history class. The history book was titled Problems of Democracy. It was three inches thick. I looked through it to find out what was said about black people. What I found was disturbing. Out of those pages in the book, the discussion of black people was about two pages. It was a picture of a ship with black people on it and it said that we were sailing from Africa to America as slaves. There wasn't too much else listed about black people and I felt rejected. Again, the question of why. Why did this happen? But there weren't any answers for me to understand why. When I attended the university, I took history classes to understand the why of racism. To get clarity on questions, it's very important to study and analyze what is confusing. I knew I had to live in this country, but I need answers to live through this. I found learning about issue, issues helped me be educated and informed and not feel I was a victim of these practices. As you move out into the world and whatever you decide to do in your life, be equipped with curiosity and challenge yourself to be better in understanding yourself and better understanding the issues you are facing. I feel I've come full circle now by being here today at Allen the College of Alameda, graduating from the Adam program. I was always interested in sewing and design, but was not able to pursue my studies in this program until I retired. I never gave up on living that dream. We need courage to never give up. So as you go out into the world, keep your dreams alive. Let curiosity guide you to be the person you envision yourself to be and do. Know that it is never too late you're never too old to learn more and do more and do your best. Don't give up on your dreams or your dreams will give up on you. The, the moment you believe you can't do it, everything else begins to crumble. Never stop believing. Stay focused, persistent, and relis relentless. I want to give a shout out to Mr. Roundtree and Mr. Piazza who managed the Adam program. <laughs> when the endemic came and we had to go online, I was amazed at how they turned all our material <coughs> in online learning quickly. I have a lot of respect for them. They challenged us to do our best and I appreciated that. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, uh, Miss Collins. Uh, there's an African saying that says, until the lion tells its tale, the story will always glorify the hunter. Sister, thank you so much for sharing your story. Thank you. 
So we want to thank our valedictorian, and we honor you on this day, and we appreciate your words of wisdom. At this time, uh, we are now going to uh, introduce Vice President of Instruction, Mr. Maurice Jones, and Acting President, our fearless leader, Dr. Bayrami. I would like to introduce now the President's Medallion winner, Ms. Juliet Breen. Ms. Breen, if you are here, join us. I knew you'd be here, even though they told me she's not here. Come on in. Something about you, and then when you're ready, you can say something about you. <laughs> they got to make those longer. All right. Juliet Breen's time at Peralta has been both challenging and rewarding. She moved to the United States alone in 2019 and has worked a full time job through the college with a weekend job on the side. She has faced housing and food insecurity, but she maintained a near perfect GPA while taking upwards of 20 units for some semesters. She's currently living on a small boat in the Bay Area where she plans to stay and continue her education. This scholarship will help her in her goal as she transferred to UC Berkeley as a student of cognitive science and data science. And in addition to the President's Medallion winner, there is another special prize for um, Juliet Breen. Chancellor? to get up. <laughs> so I will not go over all of the things that Juliet or is it Ati? That Ati, as her friends call her, has accomplished. But I do want to cover just a few things. In addition to the president's medallion, um, all of the four colleges chooses a president's medallion and then they forward all of the applicants packet to the chancellor. And then I make an additional award as the chancellor's award. And it is my honor to present the chancellor's award also to Adi Brim. <laughs> and I'm just gonna give you just a little bit because it was very difficult extremely difficult this year. So I just want to give you an idea of the quality of our students. Um, some of the demographics of the nominees, their grade point averages were 3.89, 3.9, 3.91, and 4.0. There were three females and there was one male, and one is a parent with three children. One of the first, one, one of them was the first in their family to graduate from high school, and three of them were the first in their family to attend college. And many of them have immigrated to this country either on their own or with their family, and their aspirations range from psychology to architectural design to engineering. And all are leaders on campus and in their community. One of the things that was very special about Audi is we asked about obstacles that they had overcome. And she says, I spent a year and a half during the pandemic mentoring fellow students and tutoring English and ESOL, English as a second language. To help ease my cost of living, I took out a loan and bought a small sailboat, which I live on Without this, I would struggle to afford living in the East Bay. 
Through boat life, I have faced various challenges, including a termite infection, which forced me to camp two nights on the dock, two weeks without electricity. I have no Wi-Fi. I complete my school studies at work, libraries, and in cafes. And when I first moved in, I had no running water or toilet. Despite these challenges, I have succeeded in school, shown my dedication to my education and my resilience in the face of hardship. In a letter of recommendation, and I'll finish, I don't want to embarrass you too much, but I want everyone to understand the quality of the students that are sitting before you and the families that are standing behind us. In a letter of recommendation, it says, Adi is perhaps the most resourceful and independent 22-year-old I have ever met. During her time as a community college student, she faced a period of homelessness and was still able to maintain her performance in school. She lives on a sailboat by herself, which is no small feat. She has no family living here nearby, no safety net so many young, that so many young adults have and are privileged to be able to fall back on if things start to go south. Adi just has Adi. And it shows when you speak with her. She has a grit and passion for her education and is motivated to succeed. She is curious and deeply interested in how the world works. When you speak to her, you can tell she is genuinely listening to you and contemplating what she is hearing, a quality that seems so rare. He ends with, I believe that Adi is an exceptional candidate for the scholarship. Her strengths in independence, resourcefulness, and hardship, hardworking nature make her an outstanding individual who will undoubtedly make a significant contribution to any field she chooses to pursue. And I agree. Congratulations, Adi. Thank you so much. This is such an honor. I want to congratulate everybody on graduating and wish everyone good luck with everything that's to come. The other day we had a beautiful scholars banquet recognizing all COA scholars. And our uh, salutatorian, Mr. Octavian Yuen, gave a very powerful speech in front of his peers and family. He's here um, with us today, but I want to say a few words about him. He is 16 years old and currently attending Encinal High School while duly enrolling in classes at COA. As he was heading into his freshman year of high school during the challenges of online learning, he decided to make the most of his time and set a personal challenge for himself to earn an AA degree in computer information system before graduating high school. <laughs> Throughout his time at COA, he had the privilege of growing and furthering his passion for technology particularly through the independent study course with Computer Information System Chair, Professor Anthony Viegas. This summer, he will be attending Stanford University summer session. As he embarks on the next chapter of his educational journey and enjoys his senior year of high school, he carries with him the valuable lessons and life experiences gained at COA. Mr. Yuan is deeply grateful for the support and guidance of his professors, friends, and family, especially his grandma, who has played a big role in his life, his achievements, and his accomplishment.
commencement speaker, Dr. Wise Edward Allen. Dr. Allen, he is a renowned educator and administrator who has dedicated his career to improving quality of life and education in Bay Area and especially Peralta Community College District. Over the years, he held various positions as a public servant, being this uh, city manager, social worker for adoption agency, a faculty at COA and also at San Francisco State, a dean, associate dean before that, vice president of instruction at COA, Merritt and Berkeley City College, president at several colleges in Peralta Community College District, and finally a chancellor for Peralta Community College District. His contributions have been instrumental in shaping the educational landscape of the entire region. Uh, as I look out the audience today, it makes me homesick <laughs> because I started out here as, <coughs> as a faculty member uh, in the sociology department. Board of Trustees, Dr. Jeanette Jackson, Chancellor, Dr. Deanna by Jeremy, uh, President, members of the faculty, honored guests, parents, relatives, and especially the members of the College of Alameda graduating class of 2023, good afternoon. I have a small gift for all of you. I'm going to keep my speech short. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that I don't have a lot to say, but I know you have a lot to look forward to on this very, very special day. Getting those degrees, certificates, and diplomas that you worked so hard for. Joining your families and, and friends to celebrate and to get started on your future. So I will keep my remarks short. A graduation far from being an end is the beginning of all of your tomorrows. Sure, it is the end of one path, but it is not the end of all paths. In fact, it's like coming to a fork in the road. Which road should I take? Let me share with you a little bit of my personal background and how I, I happened to choose my path. I grew up under de jure and de facto segregation. That is legal and not legal segregation. So as a child, I had a rich imagination about what the world ought to be and what it should look like. There was one dream that kept recurring as a child. I would dream that I was king not just king of America, but ruler of all the world. <laughs> Single-handedly solving all of the world's problems and making it a beautiful place for all people. And regardless of race and gender and so on. But it inspired me and I became a social worker and later a psychologist so that I could help others. As I grew and learned 
I began to realize that problems were rarely simple and solutions can often be more perplexing than the problems they were meant to solve. As I studied and thought, uh, thoughts and dreams of some of our greatest thinkers, a wonderful thing began to happen to me. I began to see our country as a land born out of a sense of justice and solutions. For me, this was the beginning of my civic and human consciousness. I realized that the contribution of an individual to society, to the world, is important and does indeed make a difference. Now, suppose for a moment, just think, just for a moment, that everyone would discover this too. That all of us did what we could to make a difference in the world, to make a better place. Oh, what a truly wonderful world this would be. I believe that such a world is possible. I believe that through education, we can find our worth, our place in society. And through our efforts, we shape the society we live in. If we remember this, we will live our lives in such a way that we will continue to teach each other that every life has worth, every life has merit, and each of us does make a contribution to the society in which we are a part of. Over the past several years, as part of this society we live in, you have worked hard, studied hard, practiced and played hard, and grown intellectually and emotionally. Now you are here ready to begin your journey down those paths and roads we call life. Think hard about where you wish to go. Keep in mind the saying that life is half spent before we know what it is. And choose your directions carefully. Or as I like to say, choose your direction wisely. <laughs> and once you have chosen, stay the course. It may not be easy, but remain focused on your dreams, your goals, and stay the course. Follow the path. It is said that the race is not to the swift nor to the strong, but to the person who stays the course. A good beginning is only of value if you persevere to the end. Be ready to meet the challenges. Do not deviate. Do not s stop. Focus. For some of you, the journey will lead to a job. For others, the responsibilities of family living. And for some, the road will mean continuing college and more years of study and preparation. Whatever path you choose, it is my sincere hope that you will look back on your years here at the College of Alameda as having prepared you in some way, you some way to meet the challenges of the future and the, ch the challenges that life presents to all of us. The very fact that you have completed your studies and are part of the graduating class means that you prepared yourself to accept new responsibilities 
and to meet the demands of a new world. As you say farewell to each other today, you say hello to those tomorrows ahead of you. Grab hold of those tomorrows. Use what you have learned here at the College of Alameda and build a bright, successful future. As you depart today, I would like to leave with you one quote, and the name of it is, anyway. People are unreasonable, illogical, and self-centered. Love them anyway. <laughs> if you do good, people will accuse you of selfish, ulterior motives. Do good anyway. If you are successful, you will win false friends and true enemies. Succeed anyway. The good you do will be forgotten tomorrow. Do good anyway. Honesty and frankness make you vulnerable. Be honest and frank anyway. The, and I would like to say one, a few more of these. What you spent, when you, what you spent years building may be destroyed overnight. All the effort you put in overnight, it, it will, can be destroyed. Build anyway. People really need help but may attack you if you help them. Help them anyway. Give the world the best you have and you'll get kicked in the teeth. Give the world the best you have anyway. This is a quote from Mother Teresa. <laughs> Congratulations to the College of Alameda graduating class of 2003 anyway. <laughs> <laughs>